we're at uh, DTW, and obviously the big topic is uh, autonomous networking. Where are your customers in their journey uh, to autonomous networking? Yeah, we have different types of customers in different levels, right? So some customers, they are still just starting, uh, and we are helping them with the strategy, the vision, where they should start. Some customers reaching level two, level three, depending on the use case, a bit more advanced. Uh, but I would say the most important thing is that everyone is committed with this vision. Patrick, I'm going to come to you. I mean, uh, automation isn't new. It's been around uh, for a ver very long time. But I guess the new thing is automation plus AI. Is that is that right? And how has that changed uh, the autonomous networking market? Yeah, I think you're right, Steve. I mean, we've, we've been looking at network automation software market for 10 years. Most, most of the spend, a little over two and a half billion dollars, has been around domain managers, and then we move, kind of moved to cross-domain managers. Now, now we're seeing uh, a focus around agentic AI. Um, what I've found at this show is more of a focus on getting the data layer correct, focus on knowledge graphs and ontology, so that these agents can actually work, to, that then will ultimately lead into autonomous networking. When you say data layer, do you mean the quality of the data, the data set? quality of the data, but more specifically, we still have a lot of silos. Um, and you still have a lot of, even suppliers, going down this path where they're, they're building their own solution stack, if you will, vertical stack. And I think that's something that the industry hasn't yet grappled with. Uh, and so that, that's been a lot of my discussions today and yesterday. So we need to move out of silos and create sort of a horizontal layer? Is that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's the ontology layer, so it's understanding you know, a customer service, you know, the underlying network elements, how they deliver that service, the relationship between it, so that these agents can actually get useful data uh, for the inferencing that they're going to do, whether it be, you know, root cause analysis, quality of service, optimization of the network, things of that nature. Uh, I think that's, that's the fundamental challenge the industry is dealing with right now. Uh, Roy, it sounds like this is a complicated challenge do you think that people are moving too quickly with autonomous networking, or do you think that they've got the cadence about right? I think it depends. I mean, there's always too fast and too slow, right? And I think that the danger with many of the telco initiatives is generally speaking that things move too slowly, but at the same time, when they see a shiny new object, sometimes we run towards it. Um, and I think the, the, the key thing here is balance, right? Finding that Goldilocks zone between too fast, too slow, but more importantly, I think what Patrick said is, is really critical. You, you cannot run towards AI and expect AI to give you value until you've done a couple of basic things. And the de of data is one thing. Access to the data is important. What Patrick talked about ontology, the semantic understanding and the value of the data and what it means is it's critical. If you don't do that and you don't build out your cloud layer or cloudification or agility layer, Forget about the AI layer, right? You might get some little benefits here and there with AI, but those are sort of like fringe benefits or spot benefits. If you want to get the full value of that, you got to fix your data layer, you got to get your cloud native layer in place, then you can get your AI layer in place. You reverse that or you mix that up, and you'll get some little advantages here and there, little bright spots here and there, but you'll never get the full benefit of that. You'll never get to level four, level five in this reality. Is, uh, this is really, really interesting, but it's also a perfect set up for Igor here because, you know, data is what you guys do at Oracle, right? So you must be advantaged in this regard uh, that, that this is the priority right now. Is that true? Is it, do you agree with that? Yeah, that, that is fully true. And uh, Oracle, all the technologies around data and how to harmonize this data, how to get value out of, uh, out of this data, right? And Oracle as a unique very unique position in the in the industry because it's not only about data, it's about all the layers that are needed to reach the business intent, right? And with Oracle, we have the network and the network service that we provide. We have the knowledge in networks. We have the knowledge in unified operations, both at service and customer level. We have the knowledge in the business layer, digital business experience, monetization, and also quite unique, we have the vertical industries mm. on top, right? So we can really do a top-down approach, starting from the business intent, translating all the layers up to the networks, and networks are there to serve the business, right? Mm. So not the opposite. So that is the, the philosophy we have. Yeah, really interesting. Um, 
I guess that you know the carriers at the moment have a sort of ex existential crisis going on because uh, you know their businesses uh, are changing so much they can't just add capacity and make more money from it anymore. Um, is network automation part of the solution uh, for their uh, business case struggles at the moment? I I I, I think uh, that's the it's the elephant in the room. So if you, if you look at automation, and the forum's been talking about moving from level three to four, and ultimately to five, um, there's a tremendous amount tied up in operational expenses. And uh, you know, w what we look at is a controllable, non-controllable. So where you can actually control that, if you can bring automation in, you can and dramatically reduce part of your operating expense, then, you know, then, you're able to generate higher profit margins, get better shareholder value because most of us know the operators market caps, you know, AT&T, Verizon, you know, pick your operator choice. Those market caps have been, you know, devastated over the last 10 years. Um, and so uh, this whole notion of telco to techco um, is a bit distorted yes. in that I think where the industry really needs to focus, and it's not a popular topic, is how do I use automation to streamline the efficiency? And some of that is gonna translate into uh, restructuring the workforce. So we won't have as many people doing field force management or customer care or running network op optimization. Um, a lot of that you can move off to uh, you know, either agents or automating some of these mundane tasks. Let me ask you one last question, put you guys on the spot. When do you think we'll start to see level five autonomous networks? Igor, what's your what's yeah. your what's your, your best guess? Yeah, my best guess will be 2028, 2029. Roy, what do you think? I think there'll be a couple of carriers that will achieve uh, five in the 2026, 2027 timeframe. Yeah, I'll I'll play devil's advocate here. I think we've already hit level five. You know, so I I think you know when you step back and you say, okay, it's a huge leap from level three to level four. Um, you have to say, okay, what's my scope? Am I going to do it on a particular domain? And kind of de-risk it. So look at aspects of, hey, this, this is where I want to put my focus, mm. and then chase the level, level four, level five. Yeah, fantastic. What a great conversation. Thank you so much, guys.